I was going to start this video with that joke from Crocodile Dundee. That's not a knife. That's a knife. But then I looked at the knife I had made and went, did I just make a Crocodile Dundee knife by accident? On closer inspection there are numerous differences and I did not just do that thing. So I have a better descriptor for the knife I made, which I will be sharing later on in the video. Anyway, here's blacksmithing. This is Spike Martin of Bearded Pig Forge in Kent. He's been a blacksmith for seven years and we made him turn off the lights to get this really cool shot with the grinder. And I contacted him like, hey, I'd like to come and spend two days making a knife and also bring a cameraman. And he was like, Sure. So having eventually successfully navigated my way through 76 acres of Quex Park, we got to work. This is the sort of shape that I, I saw and I went, yes, I want to make one that looks like that. You'll see how it turns out. Day one was making the knife blank, which is what the metal knife shaped part is called. So you will note as we go through that while I concentrated fairly hard on getting the shape of the knife blade, roughly correct. I did not really focus on the handle at all, which is why it just looks a bit strange. But here we are. First order of business after choosing the shape, heat up the gas forge, which normally has bricks on the back, but look at this awesome shot. Yes, this was also purely for the aesthetic, but really, can you blame me? Anyway, you take your rectangle of steel, a reasonably large rectangle of steel in my case, you heat it up in the forge until it glows, and then you start by shaping the point of the knife by hammering in on the end of it at 45 degrees until it starts to go pointy. The most important thing for safety in a forge, and this is basically what Spike told me in the safety briefing, is that you have to remember that fire is hot. Anything you put near the fire will get hot, anything you put in the fire will be hot, and it will remain hot for quite a long time. I mean, you're doing great, so... <laughs> Oh, I said it. There we go. <laughs> so he specifically told me, if you drop your work, don't panic, don't try and catch it, just step back from it, let it fall, and then pick it up with the tongs. It will be fine. And as you can see, I did that, so good listening past Jill. So when it looks slightly pointy to shape the curves, you need to hammer down one side of it until it reaches approximately the right shape, as you can see being demonstrated by Spike and slightly less efficiently by me. That looks really good. Like, and 100%, I don't have to say that. <laughs> I always say to students, I said, this looks good, and they go, yeah. go no, I don't, I don't have to say that. After you've shaped the blade to your liking in this fashion, you start work on the handle, which is the point where I started to flag like mentally and physically a little bit, and also the point where I stopped paying attention to what shape I had originally intended to make the thing. To make the handle, you have to start by hammering an indent at the bottom here, and that took quite a long time. And so when Spike said, would you like me to do a little bit? I said, yes, please. So in 10 minutes, he did what would have taken me about half an hour. I am literally doing the same thing that you were doing. There's no trick. Workshops are no place for being too proud to ask for help. That is just unsafe. The next step after you've shaped the handle, and please do remember to think about what handles look like and don't be me, is to put in the guide marks for the pins that will go in and then actually hammer the holes for the pins, which is a two-person job unless you want to hold the tongs with your legs, which don't recommend. There followed some correction of the knife blade, which was slightly askew, and there we are. No, it looks like a thing. No, it looks like a knife. It's a thing. A thing knife. And that took a whole day. That was pretty much day one, although there was also one minor incident which I haven't mentioned. <clears throat> See this really nice light gray thing? Yeah. That's a bit the heavier movement here. Oh, I'm sorry. Oops. It started off as a rectangle and now it's a, it sort of looks like a knife. It does look I mean, like a knife. I mean, it looks like a knife that you pulled out of a 3,000 year old bog, but, you know, still recognizable as a knife. Yeah. And can you give us your uh, on a performance today? On a performance. As a smith? <laughs> Oh, nine out of ten. Worked really well. Happy with nine out of ten? I'll take that. You can't get perfection. There's no way. Also, I did break his hammer. You just break my hammer? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. It's okay. It's okay. If you're a student, you're allowed. <laughs> but yeah, so tomorrow, I'd just like to do a little bit of clean-up grinding. Obviously, I'm not going to touch this. It's still incredibly hot. Maybe bring this curve in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Same with this one. 
just to give yourself a bit more neatness. Yep. Anything in here, same thing. A little bit on the handle, probably take that corner off. Mm -hmm. And then along the flat side, if you want it to be shiny. Put a bevel on it, heat treat it, get it hot, burst into flames, very good fun. Quick safety brief just before we do that. Okay. And then uh, we'll have a little quick hand on it. On to day two. Well, it's reasonably early in the morning and we're about to start the second day. Yesterday I did a lot of heating and hammering and heating and hammering and heating and hammering. And today we're going to be using the grinder. So lots and lots of that. And then by the end of the day, I'm hoping that I'm gonna have a real knife and I'm really excited about it. <laughs> I have to say, most use of the grinders looks pretty much the same. You gently press the bit you want to make smooth and shiny against the rapidly rotating belt, and if it's metal you get dramatic sparks, and those sparks look extra swish if you turn off the lights, as demonstrated earlier. So all of these crescents, mm -hmm. they're hammer marks, they're there to your hammer, where you've knocked them in flat. And so you try and make the surface smooth and shiny and get rid of things like hammer marks say. The grinding process, unsurprisingly, makes your knife blank very hot. So you have a bucket of water next to it so you can cool it down when you need to. Otherwise it would start burning your hands. I burnt my hands twice. Also the sparks were a bit ow, so I got some latex gloves on which helped. So after some time grinding when the knife blank is looking how you want it, you can put it back in the forge and possibly straighten it out a little bit. And then you put it back in the forge and then you take it out and you just hold it. So what's this doing? Is this great structure like the internal molecular bonds of the steel. Normalizing when you heat it up and then just let it cool down again makes it more ductile. And then you heat it up again and then you plunge it dramatically into a bucket of oil to quench it. There are flames. It's neat. This makes it less ductile. It smells like food. Yeah, so I used to do it in vegetable oil and rape, a mix of vegetable oil and rapeseed oil. Um, and it made my workshop sound like a chip shop. It's quite nice actually. But that's hardening. So what that's doing, that's rearranging the chemical bonds. Um, and it brings everything closer together because what we call it, like if we look for a fine grain structure, all those things are pulled very, very tight. That makes it tougher, stronger. It also makes it incredibly brittle. So what we're going to do in a bit is a process called tempering where we make it a little bit softer. Okay. Just so it's less likely to chip. This would be a bad time to drop it. That's what you're saying. Probably would survive. Like it'd probably be alright. Give it a shot. No. It was so shiny. It was so shiny. That Thanks. light grey you can kind of see underneath it. Mm -hmm. That's an indicator of martensite, a hardened state of steel. So then you grind it again to make it all shiny, which takes considerably less time than previously, just to point that out, followed by more heat treatment. So what I'm going to start doing is nice. heating up the spine. The idea is to oxidize the steel until it turns this sort of straw yellow bronzish color, possibly with some blue along the spine. Apparently the other way to get that oxidation is to put it in an oven, but blow torches are quicker and also more fun. And then you dunk it in the oil again. Anyway, thereafter, once it's cool enough to handle again, the fiddliest possible part of the process starts, which is putting on the bevel. I making it have an edge. You have to get the knife and then put it very close to the belt and then tip it ever so slightly and then move it along at exactly the same angle. It's not the easiest thing I've ever done, I'm gonna be honest with you, but I did it. Yeah, it's looking really good. You just need to get a nice handle set up. Not bad for a first knife. No, really not, no. Smooth, clean. Normally eight people end up with loads of hammer marks all the way along here. I taped it up to protect myself from the edge and now we're on the home straight making the handle. You get two bits of wood, Marker pen, you draw, you sand, you put some holes in. Spike also thoughtfully included a hand guard and you can see the little spacer that he has added for me. Because we were talking about my YouTube channel and I explained about the whole murder dress and stabbing experiments thing and he was like, well you need a hand guard then. Isn't it pretty though? I think most of what contributes to the Crocodile Dundee impression is the underside brass hand guard and just the sheer size of the thing. Yeah, a bit chunky. Yep. So you probably want to start taking some off the outside edges. And then it was time for my old friend Epoxy. Five minute epoxy. <laughs> this did not quite go perfectly as planned. What you do is mix up the five minute epoxy and then you have, well, five minutes to get everything on and lined up nicely. So this is where they might need like a little bit more wiggle. Mm -hmm. Until things line and stuff looks like quite long. <laughs> Can't see what I'm doing. Yeah, so just turn it, make it where you need it to go. Oh. <laughs> How out does it look? Um, I can't tell. Don't squeeze it if your thumb's under it, so suddenly it shuts, you'll have a sore thumb. Um, is it? 
the second one is a little bit off, like the middle one, and mm -hmm. I can't. Just need to poke in the right direction. Help. So this is one of those things you go, that's not going to work. <laughs> and then it does. Score one for the blacksmith and the five minute epoxy, nobody panic. Then you clamp it and you wait and then you can finish it off. That finishing off thing took another couple of hours and in the middle of that the cameraman had to leave because, you know, there were other places that he had to be. Are you proud of it? I am. I'm Should so be. proud of it. I'm like, look, I made this thing. It took a large amount of hours. It did look rather rough at that point because I hadn't done very much work at all in smoothing the handle. But after probably another hour of sanding and finishing and holding it in my hand to see if it was comfortable or not, here we are. I've got to tell you, I really love this thing. And then I showed it to my friend and he was like, it looks like an orc knife gel. And I wasn't sure whether to be flattered or perturbed that I had tried for a sort of elegant Persian inspired thing and instead got something that looks like it was made by a dude with bat wings coming out of his head. Oh well, next time I will pay closer attention to my chosen design and maybe I'll start with a smaller piece of steel. Who knows? The nice thing, of course, is that because I made it, I spent a lot of time holding it in my hand to see whether or not it felt comfortable. It's it's really, really comfy. Spike usually does a knife making workshop, but I wonder if we could persuade him to make a dagger next time. If you like that idea, please do leave a comment because sometimes I have grand ideas for projects and nobody else is really into them, so let me know either way. And if, having seen this one, you want the somewhat extended version of this video, you can use the blue join button underneath the video on YouTube, or you can go to patreon.com slash jillbearer. Both of these have basically the same things. YouTube gives you a little badge, Patreon takes less of a cut, so it's cheaper. Your call. The extended version does have a fair amount more talking, I was, you know, enthused. <laughs> if that's not your thing, then you may enjoy some of my previous creation projects, like that time I turned myself into warrior princess Barbie. Yes, it's a little strange, but yes, that's okay. If you've made it this far in the video, probably so are you. So take care, and I'll see you next time.